church bell is good. Well, Kailaka came about because Helen Comfort um, had this thought that she would like on her 75th birthday, in her 75th birthday year, to um, gather together a group of women artists and take us all, not take us, organise for us all to go to a residency in Cyprus that she knew. But because of the COVID um, problem, we didn't go to Cyprus. We came instead to Ballon Glen. But otherwise, our mission remained the same. It was to um, assemble eight women artists, the figure eight representing the figure for woman, and that all of us would be over 70, and that we would come to a place together as it happened well and then, and that we would think about making art and aging and how our processes have changed, how our collective 500 odd years of experience making art has, um, how that has settled now that we are the age we are and what we think about the future. I'm just sitting here in among the debris uh, de the the de de detritus, de detritus of uh, of all the stuff I bring. I'm, I'm I'm like a bag lady. Everything comes with me in case I need, in case I need. And this diary is actually from the beginnings of it are from 2005. 2005, all the way through, seldom used, but going back to when I remember things that I have to look at. And I just was working with sheets again, and I came across these from 2007, with the knots and the sheet knots. And I just don't know why I left it so quickly. You leave things, I mean, you do a piece of work and then you move on. My work ethic has continued as a kind of sense of vocation, I suppose. Yes. Um, but I find as I get older, my energy goes. And I find it sad. Just, yes, yes, I should count. Yes. 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 I, I found, though, that... that with children and, yes. and, and being restricted in the time I could spend in the studio, that sometimes I invested too much emphasis on the doing and, yes. and I know that feeling must so. get yes. on and so on. Yes. And so, so I finally sort of got rid of that and I'm quite content to be in the studio and sort of accomplish ostensibly very little, but, but lots yes. happening. In there the, is something about yeah. being in the studio, I think. Yes. People have a, almost a habit, a habit, a favourite habitat, and I think the studio is mine. Absolutely, me too. Don't you have this idea? I mean, I often yeah. have that struggle yeah. that I have an idea and I have a vision of it, yeah. but I can't work with that idea in my head. Yeah. I have to forget it. Well, I, I often have to, to make and make and make to get yeah. rid of it, so that so that it it has to be worked through rather than not worked in my head, but yeah. but worked through, and then my head has to say stop. <laughs> yeah, kind of open yourself up, or you know make yourself in a way vulnerable. That uh, what's in you, the so comes comes out in the work, or y yes, that's... yes. I'm just uh, yes. When you were yes. Talking I, about the, you I, I would just hope that 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 when when somebody looks at that work that they're not thinking, but that maybe maybe something is happening, you know, literally. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That yeah. it it, and I suppose the word moves is an interesting one, isn't it? Or yeah. uh, you know, breath taking is. Because when something really works, it does take your breath away, doesn't it? You know, it it. You stop for me. Yeah. You yeah. do. You really yeah. do. It it's it's visceral. Yeah. Yeah. So so, 
That's what I'm attempting. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm totally with you. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. managed to get eight women artists. We had two other people in turn who for different reasons had to opt out. So we ended up actually slightly changing our rule and going for an artist who is a bit younger than the rest of us and who is a musician. So we have seven people involved in the visual arts and one musician, a composer and jazz musician called Karen Nelson. And actually that completed the process beautifully for all of us because we wanted somebody who would animate the group in a different way that maybe another visual artist might have done. We had thought about having a performance artist on board but Carol fulfills that function in some ways as well as bringing um, sound and music very prominently into the group. for me to describe. Um, so it might just be one, one thing that somebody said about, like I remember Barbara yesterday said, when do you know how to stop? And she said, when there's no energy left in it for me. And that's exactly how I feel. But to have someone say that in a way that I haven't articulated to myself. Yeah. Does that make sense? So that, and I know um, other times I've, um, I've just picked up small ideas that have just fed in to what I'm doing here. I suppose at the outset I was very nervous about what I might do because I think there was an expectation coming from some of the artists that I would reveal myself to have been some kind of an artist all along. <laughs> that hasn't happened because I think, and I do make art actually, and this is something I haven't really said to anybody else up to now, I do make art at home a bit, but here it was more about um, a real need to observe a collective working together and how that collective, how we, how all of us, including myself, in the collective, but I see myself also as a bit of an observer all the time, um, how we all interacted with each other in all kinds of ways, all of it very supportive, yeah. none of it competitive, and I was surprised yeah. and pleased about that. And yeah. everybody just being really willing to learn from everybody else around them, the open-mindedness of the whole group, I would say at all times has been yeah, astonishing. Yeah. So you can you can beak up your your um, your plate. Okay. And you can do, for instance, yeah, just just. something to see, do something okay. and look. Yeah. That's lovely. So I just walked in to see the three of you at work and um, and see you, Gerda, up on your chair in your bare feet going like, I don't know, Pilgrim's Progress across a huge sheet of paper with a very small pen or I don't know, it's a brush or a pen, I haven't looked at what you were using, but with a very small point 
and a very thin line to cover such a big space. And then right next to you is um, Helen making, um, filling a, a meter square canvas with wax and black pigment. And then next to that again is Maria making um, your lovely little gem-like, little small scale paintings using the weirdest of implements. It is like you go from, it's a bit like the witches actually, we're all called the witches, don't you think? So you get, have you looked, all looked at Maria's little tools with their pointy, um, their points to make them into pens, but they are gnarled, wild bits of hawthorn bush nearly. Um, and then your cauldron there bubbling away, and you and your bare feet. <laughs> I want to make a series of fragments of human skin, aging skin, and I wanted to not compare them, but uh, juxtapose them with images of like the skin of the earth. So it would be, working here in Berlin again, images of the rock surfaces of the coastland. But because it's, everything is so varied, I wanted to find a way of dividing this film up into sections. And so then I thought of the idea that each section would begin with a portrait of one of the other artists here. And um, that portrait would come up very fast and then slowly disappear into the details of the skin, etc. And the sound, because I've recorded them speaking, would actually start again with their voice, but very quickly it would then just fade into the wind. And, and, the, 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 and that image of the face fading uh, would be the beginning of each chapter. You can see here, this is the one for Gerda, but all these images are, are, are fused together with different sounds and that, and so that's what it looks like on the programme. I haven't got finished, quite finished for Gerda yet. And it's not like riding a bicycle. You have to start at the very beginning again. The documentary why this happened is really when we spoke first maybe to Helen about creating this uh, group of women artists to go away with each other. Um, the first instant I felt about it is, well, having eight women artists, but you have to do something about that, you know? You can't just let it go like this. So I felt that was very really interesting to see, could we document the process of, and the idea of why we are coming together. When I look at the documentary now and, and I go to Helen or I go to Gerda, I want to show how that art, like Gerda's piece of drawing is developing. Uh, and so with the jazz musicians as well, I'm interested in that relationship, how the work has progressed over those four weeks. And in one way I feel this is a collaboration between me, the camera, and the person who is the artist who is creating artwork, and that's the difference. I'm looking at the process because I'm an artist, obviously, and it gives me an easier way to understand maybe the artist's work. Uh, 
On the other hand, it gives me an insight. I was amazed how how little I thought I know the person, but how little I know about it when I started to follow the process of the work of that artist. And I started to feel I got uh, more knowledge of it. And it's quite an emotional thing. Mm -hmm. I find it quite emotionally um, to follow this artist's work and to represent the work and you want to represent it the best way of possible. And that's the difference with, with with when I do a piece of art with Patricia, it comes from a different source, it comes from a different mindset. Um, how are you finding working together in this space? I Doing such fantastic. different things? It's quite different to work with other people there, but there is some, um, like we are of similar minds, we all want mm. to create something while we're here. So there's this beautiful silence mm. that we all get absorbed in our own work. And occasionally we have a tiny chat, but now we disturb each other. Okay. So it's, it's, um, it makes it more intense, I feel, in a very nice way mm. to work here. Mm. And you're not used to working in shared studios, any no, one of the no, three of you, no. are you? No. So how are you finding that? No, lovely, no problem at all, no. Okay. It's, it's, it's lovely to hear sort of somebody scratching in the, in the distance and uh, now Helen, uh, you know, making strong strokes the other side of the partition mm. from me. Mm. And, uh, Yes, it's, it's, it's a very uplifting because, you know, you get into your own little comfort zone and it's lovely to just be sure, and sure. to be doing, sure. which is really it, great. Sorry, it, it, it's a bit like um, I, I once uh, did meditation sessions mm. with a, a lot of other people and it, it seem that the meditation was much more possible and easier to get into when you had 20 people or whatever mm. all, all attempting to do the same thing mm. and I yeah. think it's a bit like that. Mm. that exactly, yeah, yeah you, you're yeah. putting it there, yeah, I've yeah. done that as well and it really feels like the meditation is almost stronger, you get to that place much quicker or something because yeah. there is this common thought or there's something in the air which helps you that way because the other people are of similar mind. Okay, so it's like um, a vibe between the three of you that you pick up because none, not, no two of you had ever worked together before, had you? No. 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 Okay, and this is not collaborative work, it's just three people working alongside each other in a separate space. One artist came in today, our jazz musician, um, Carol, and she, she sat while I painted her hands. And she said, oh God, I'd love to have a go with that. So I have this amazing table here with amazing <laughs> colours. And she had never seen anything like it. She said she paints at home with small little tubes or watercolours and she was dying to get her hands into this and she did an amazing piece of work yeah, of me. Yeah, she did yeah. the best painting of me. Yeah. I'm doing some some that I like people I wouldn't know that well. Um that I only met now. I, I find it easier to do their faces because you're registering just what you see. But if somebody like Helen, who's a big life with me and a big life of behind her of painting and, you know, there's a whole history to her that you'd want to try and get in. Yeah, and it's, yeah. This is impossible, what I'm saying, because I'm never going to be able to do that. But it's, I, I, I'm trying to reach for the stars. Yeah.
I love their faces and I love their old faces and it's a landscape in a way. There's as many crags in our face as rocks. And I'm lonely at home in Rusk in uh, in Valley Brit in in, in Anfield, yeah, yeah, Silver Barn. Uh, there's only the two of us, and I go to my studio, and it is lonely. And I often do self portraits because I'm there. Uh, I love I love working with people, so yeah. it's a great excuse to um. Yeah, they're lovely to me. They they don't mind. They come and they sit and we chat. Yeah, that'd be nice. Might the thing is the thing is about this. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> they're telling me your portrait is finished. My portrait. I was going to have you in to put your glass. No, I'm trying to decide. No, you're the one. You're the one. I was supposed to be a sort of cold. Oh, I'll come and talk to you. I actually did. Don't I the other day. I pushed this, these things on all of you. Um, you know, these things. Yeah, because I thought it's a pro. I just came to the So, I suppose it would be lovely if we could start by asking you to tell us a bit about the foundation, the background to it, the history of this place, which is wonderful. Okay. Well, Ballon Glen was founded in 1992 by two Americans, Margot Dolan and Peter Maxwell. Um, they had a galleries in New York and Philadelphia at the time in the early 80s. And they came to Bally Castle on holidays and just fell in love. They loved the landscape, they loved the people, and for them, they just went back each time crying all the way to Shannon. So, during the downturn in the 80s, they closed their gallery in Philadelphia and just thought, what have we always wanted to do? And their plan was to develop an art award for artists, an art residency program, and they said Valley Castle is the place we want to be. Maria was the one who, when we started this project off, sent us all an email and said, bring Wellington boots, bring a high-vis jacket, and bring a torch. Yeah. So, you know, we knew we weren't in for an easy ride, actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking to the sky, which I find dominates this area very much. Um, as it is such an ever-changing sea, I, and with wind as a factor, I come and paint with small boards and get the essence of the painting down. Then this can be brought back to the studio and worked up into, say, a size 30 by 35 or similar size.
we are going to go with four sort of afternoon sessions here mm -hmm. in the museum. Yeah. And the dates we have for them. But what I didn't do yet, well, we've noted who will do what. Okay. And we've noted dates where we have to match the dates to the two to people the who will things. do. Yeah. yeah. And we'll do that in the next okay. half hour or so. So Tuesday the 15th we do one. Thursday the 17th. Yeah. Tuesday the 22nd. <gasps> Then I realised Carla was coming and that I got these reams of this newsprint paper which is throwaway. It doesn't matter. So whatever you do, it doesn't matter. It, it's the doing of it uh, that counts. And I think I got excited about it because I used to teach a lot of blank drawing and I found that one minute poses were brilliant. People forgot to, to criticise themselves. But uh, the warmth and uh, um, the whole experience here was so fantastic. To be with people, all creative people who, uh, many of them go through the same processes I'm going through and the insecurity and the, the whole way of thinking, even the outcome of the work is quite different to all. They all work quite differently, but the, the process itself uh, seemed to often be very similar. Yeah. And also the insecurity we all have, and and there is something that we all want to be together. Yeah. And the warmth, and that in itself gives the strength. And even yeah. the the discussions, because at the time I thought, God, I want to work instead of the discussion yeah. or something, yeah. but. I think these ex discussions are very important and all the different experiences beside the work itself but connected with the work, I think it helps to deepen your understanding of your own work. Yeah, yeah. And that's the big thing from here as well yeah. that I feel... So you're really kind of influenced by... Yeah, very much. That, that influenced and, and inspired. Thank you to Mayo Arts Office for actually all the support you've given us. Um, we've had a great time in County Mayo. We've had, we're having a, a ball out in Ballon Glen. But also, the moment that I wrote to Katrina and said we were going to be in Mayo for a month and was there anything we could do that might be, you know, of use to the art centre, both Katrina and Eva uh, O'Keefe came back to us with just so much, um, so many ideas and such, just such a suggestion that they were on our side, that, that got us really launched before we arrived um, out of our cars in Ballon Glen at all. So we're really grateful for that. Can't say enough about it. And then of course the landscape of Ballon Glen and the community uh, all around North Mayo has been a great inspiration for us all. project not knowing any of the other women involved so for me I think the most important thing that I'm taking away from this is the friendships that I've made and the certainty that there's something created here that will continue 
and uh, flourish. Um, that's the most important thing. Besides that, there's the the composition that I've done that it's still kind of, I think, a bit of a mystery to people because it's really only when I get home, go into rehearsal and then go into recording that it becomes uh, something of uh, something that people can hear, um, as I hope it, uh, anyway. So, but the friendship, I'll go back to that, really. Helen, do you want to add anything? I'm afraid I'm going to be very boring and say the same thing. Uh, <laughs> just just the, the support and, and love. And, and I think that, you know, we're all very positive, but, but there is a, a process of ageing that we all have to look at. And, and I think being in the company of, of all of us of slightly different ages is, is great, that we can... We can we have been drawing strength from each other um, and, you know, look into the future with more confidence, maybe. Yeah. One of the things that I'm very pleased about, and I think we all are, about that is how we very quickly trusted each other enough to speak out very openly about things like, you know, intimacy and how we find that at over 70 or whatever age we happen to be, um, or, you know, whether we're, we fear the next stage of our lives, or what, as I said already, what strategies we might draw on to help us to feel really positive about it, despite the limitations of um, various health conditions. And we talked about friendship and loss, and we, and we talked about friendship in particular because, you know, when you get over 70, a lot of your friends begin to die off and there are fewer of them and is it possible to make new friends over 70? Well actually this month proved without a shadow of a doubt that it is and they are important friendships, they're not just passing things, we have something serious going between us all now which will stay with us.